Alright, guys, welcome back to another reaction video. My name is James. I'm Nobu. And today we are going to be watching uh, part two of the Harry Potter pitch meetings. Uh, you know, these movies are great. These pitch meetings are great. I really feel like, especially if you're watching part two, you probably already watched part one. This needs no introduction. So, that being said, let's just get into the uh, Order of the Phoenix uh, pitch meeting. So, you have a new Harry Potter movie for me? Yes, Whoa, sir, I a, do. In order of Phoenix, the Phoenix, name of this one. Oh, like a like a, like a, like a, like a group of urologists? Like, no, Phoenix. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, there are a bunch of wizards in Arizona. <laughs> no? Okay, keep going. I'll catch Just on eventually. Just stop. You'll learn. All You'll right, learn. so Harry's swinging on a swing set like a little boy, and Dudley comes to pick on him, and let me tell you, he's totally changed his clothing style. <laughs> that right? is but true. But they get attacked by some Dementors who show them their scary butthole mouths. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah, so then Harry uses his Patronus charm to get rid of them, but then he finds out he's been expelled from Hogwarts for doing that. Well, that doesn't seem fair. Yeah. No, it doesn't. So Dumbledore manages to get the Ministry to agree to at least a hearing. Well, good. So this group of wizards called the Order of the Phoenix pick him up from the Dursleys on some magic brooms, and they fly past some awesome London landmarks. <laughs> they make him fly through public spaces on a magic broom because yeah, he's got to go to the But it's a cool moment, I swear. magic in public. That's right, sir. So then Dumbledore manages to keep Harry at Hogwarts, but the Ministry's up to some funny business. Oh, they are? Yeah, see, they're doing everything they can to stop people from believing that Voldemort might be back. Oh, very sketchy. Yeah, and they put one of their people, Dolores Umbridge, at Hogwarts oh as the new gosh, defense I forgot against she the was Dark Arts movie. teacher. Oh, what was her name? She's this short little lady, wears a lot of pink, really likes cats. Oh, she doesn't sound so bad. She's the absolute worst, and people are going <laughs> to hate her more than, than they hate Voldemort. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah, she's super snooty and mean, and she even interrupts Dumbledore's annual intro speech about how all the students students are in grave danger. Oh, oh, but which he is loves a no -no. giving that speech. He really does, sir. Yeah. Oh, and also since Harry saw Cedric die in the last movie, he can now see these creatures called Thestrals, which you can only see when you've seen someone die. He saw his mom die. Oh, yeah, he did, but he was too young to understand yeah, what death was. He saw Professor it. Quirrell die just a couple of years ago. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but the situation about Maybe that you one can't is kill I'm gonna need you yeah, to get all the way off my back about it. Okay, let me get off of that, 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 back, that back of yours. So anyway, <laughs> she's not gonna teach the students any defense spell so Harry gets mad. He does. Yeah, he's like, Voldemort is back. I watched him murder Cedric Diggory. Wormtail murdered Cedric. Voldemort was still a little baby. Oh yeah, whoops. Whoops, eh? Anyway, yeah, so Umbridge gives Harry yeah, okay. the threat is still there. The that carves into your flesh. Oh, which, which, which is not normal. Oh, it's not. Okay, sorry. It just seems like Hogwarts students are always being forced to do like super violent, dangerous things. It felt <laughs> yeah, that but that's, that's true. not normal, you're saying. It's not. Wow, well, okay. So Umbridge starts imposing a bunch of crazy crazy rules and posting them up on a wall where you can't even see them and the students are getting pissed. So what are they gonna do? Well, they make a secret club called Dumbledore's Army and Harry starts teaching everybody spells in the Room of Requirement. Oh, that's that room where you get you get the requirements the, in there. That's the one. So the bad guys room. know that they're doing something in this specific spot, but they just can't catch them in the act. Oh, uh, catching people in the act is tight. What? That's why I'm always kicking down motel room doors. Oh my god. So then what happens? You might be going to jail <laughs> So we got a deeper like just deeper plot line. Cho Chang. Aww. In front of a picture of the guy she was dating, you know, the recently deceased one. Yeah, uh, I, think she's I remember crying that. About that was so oh, oh, that's anyway, true. Anyway, so eventually Umbridge forces Cho to tell them where everybody's practicing, and then she busts down the wall. I thought they already knew where the meetings were. They did. So why didn't Umbridge break down that wall earlier? Because she needed Unclear. a witness. So since they called themselves Dumbledore's army, he takes the blame for everything yeah. and escapes by clapping on a bird. Oh, wow, 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 wow. So then Umbridge <laughs> becomes headmaster and she starts controlling everything. It gets real crappy. Oh no. And Harry eventually has this magical vision of Sirius being attacked in the Ministry of Magic, so they gotta get there ASAP. How are they gonna do that? Well, the only usable flu network fireplace is in Umbridge's office, so they try to use it, but she busts them. Uh-oh, it's gonna be hard for them to get there with Umbridge on their back. Actually, it's gonna be super yeah, easy. She's Barely a inconvenience. Oh, really? You see, they trick her into going into the Forbidden Forest by saying that Dumbledore had a secret secret weapon in there. She just believes them and goes with them into the forest with no backup. Yeah. She does. And then some centaurs and Hagrid's half-brother mess her up and drag her away. Amazing. So now they can <laughs> go to the ministry. Exactly. So they hop on some Thestrals and fly over there. Why don't they just use the flu network <laughs> thing in Amber's office since she's <laughs> out of the cool. picture now? I don't know. That's so they Thestrals get there and go cool. into the Department of Mysteries, which has these prophecy balls stacked super high up. Oh, very highly stacked balls. Yeah, they need to find this one about Harry Potter and Voldemort, so they 
then they do, and they grab it. Wow, well, thank God it wasn't one of the ones at the top of the stack. <laughs> it worked out great, but then some Death Eaters pop out, and it turns out it was all a trick. Oh, no. Yeah, because see, the only person who can take a prophecy is the person who the prophecy is about, and Voldemort really wanted to know what was in this one. If it was also about Voldemort, couldn't he have grabbed it? Yeah, he's like a big boss guy. He doesn't do stuff himself. <laughs> That's a good point. Awesome. And we're also going to see that one of the bad guys is Sirius's cousin, Bellatrix Lestrange. And what's her deal? Oh, well, she actually tortured and killed Neville's parents when he was a baby. So when she yeah. sees them, she's like, hey, Neville, how's your parent? How are your parents doing, buddy? How does she recognize him <laughs> if she last saw him as a baby? Oh, I don't know. Uh, magic, probably, I guess. I don't know. That makes sense. Yeah, there was so anyway, Look, the he's got a recognizable Phoenix face, up, bro. And there's this big fight, and then Bellatrix kills Sirius. Oh, no. Yeah, so Harry's all pissed, and he wants to kill Bellatrix, but then Voldemort pops out. Whoa. Oh. But then Dumbledore pops <laughs> out, too. Whoa. These wizards are all about popping out. <laughs> they are, sir. So then there's this big old <laughs> duel, and then Voldemort gives Harry a terrifying vision of Voldemort in a hoodie. Oh, spooky. <laughs> yeah, it's a zip-up hoodie, too. He has oh, no business that's wearing horrifying. Anyway, so then Harry manages to make Voldemort it's all leave about with the, the power of friendship or something. Oh, the power of friendship is unstoppable. Give me a high five, my dude. No, no thank you. That'd be way too complicated editing-wise. That's fair. <laughs> so then Harry like gets back with his friends, that. and he's like, you know what I've been thinking? We have something Voldemort doesn't. Mm, noses. Well, yeah, but also something <laughs> dude, I freaking worth said fighting that. for. Oh, very cute. And so that's about it. What do you think? Well, it sounds like money. We should start shooting ASAP. So then we can start shooting the next one and the next one. Yeah, I mean, at a reasonable pace, right? Want to make sure all the cast and crew were all good? Of course, of course. Their well-being is always our top priority. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, you have a new Harry All Potter right, movie go. for me? Yes, sir, I do. And so the Death Eaters are getting real bold, right? Like, they straight up destroy the Millennium Bridge in London. <laughs> oh, man, bad guys hate when bridges are standing. Yeah, they do. Doesn't Harry Potter technically take place in the 90s, though? It does, yeah. Wasn't that bridge built in the year 2000? There's no way for me to check that, sir. Oh, uh, okay, <laughs> but there is, though. Actually, no. So we're going to meet we're up with Harry Potter. Potter it's a different and world. Up reading a magical newspaper yeah, in front of world. muggles in a coffee shop. Oh, this guy never learns not to do magical stuff in front of muggles. He certainly doesn't, <laughs> sir. So he has this flirty thing going on with this girl, but then Dumbledore pops up like, hey, no, Harry, it's time for my annual child endangerment plan. Oh, that's cute. That's <laughs> his Sorry. favorite thing. Gotta ruin kids it. kids in mortal danger. Yeah, and so Dumbledore needs some crucial information from this Professor Slughorn guy that was Voldemort's teacher back in the day. Okay. But Slughorn is ashamed, and so he's hiding the truth, but Dumbledore needs this information. You know, the fate of the world is at stake. Wow, so I guess he can use some of that truth serum stuff on him, huh? If the world is in danger. Wait. Yeah, I guess so, but instead he's gonna hire this guy as a teacher for an entire school year and send the teenager <laughs> with PTSD on a multiple month-long spy mission. Yeah, I mean that plan works too, that's just as good. Plus yeah, Voldemort usually attacks at the end Very of the efficient. school year, so there's plenty of time here. That's a good point, sure. And so also Draco Malfoy has been tasked with killing Dumbledore and Professor Snape takes an unbreakable yeah. vow to protect him. Wow, an unbreakable vow, huh? Can that be broken? It no. Okay, got it. That makes sense. Yeah. So eventually the school year starts Wait, and Harry so gets this used textbook that says it belonged to the Half-Blood Prince. Right. And this thing has handwritten exactly. instructions in it that are better than the actual book instructions and so Harry makes I have actually done that in death school. Potion. <laughs> it feels kind of dangerous to have Which a bunch of teenagers really try to make liquid death potions. <laughs> it's like yeah, gives you the bad problem answers. So they don't really answers. teach yeah. kids anything unless it could lead to them dying a horrible death. Fair enough. So because Harry made the best liquid death potion, Professor Slughorn gives him a vial of liquid luck. What's that? Oh, it's this freaking potion that gives you incredible luck, but it's yeah. pretty hard to make, so it's pretty rare. Couldn't you take some, and then while you have incredible luck, try so to make some more? Hey, shut up, and so true. Harry has this bottle he can use <laughs> any time. Wow, so I guess he uses it to get the information he needs from Slughorn, huh? Yeah, he'll eventually get around to doing that towards the end of the school year, but right now we gotta focus on the meat of the movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right, in the book there's the whole mystery about who the Half-Blood Prince is, and Harry learning a bunch of stuff about Voldemort's past. Yeah, yeah I mean, but... that'll be in here a tiny bit, but that's not what I'm talking about. What yeah. are you talking about then? Teenage romance. <laughs> <laughs> kind of want to know a lot more about the evil dark lord nah, and the potential nah, it's end all of about the world, the though. Yeah, that kind of stuff is mostly going on in the background, but did you know that Ginny Weasley is dating Dean Thomas? <laughs> I, no. 
I guess I didn't know that. And Ron starts dating Lavender Brown, who's completely changed since her first years at Hogwarts. <coughs> oh, like she grew up? No, she's white now. She didn't used to be. Oh, my God. What? And Hermione's jealous of their relationship because she has a crush on Ron. Oh, yeah, what's going on with Voldemort, though? And eventually, Ginny and Dean <laughs> Thomas break up, so now Harry's got a shot with her. All right, I mean, okay, do they at least have good chemistry? Not even a little. It's going to be super no, hard to watch. Th eh? To be so fair, she's gonna feed as him a, a teenager. Little cookie and tie his shoes for him. Yeah. And you'll never guess who Hermione he invites to Slughorn's Christmas party. I don't particularly care. Poor Mac McClaggish. Sure, okay, all right. The world's in danger, though, right? Should we maybe spend a bit of time on that? Maybe Slughorn about taught that his students party. how to make a love potion, and Ron accidentally takes some that was meant for Harry. Love potion, right? That thing that JK included in the book with horrible moral implications. <laughs> and while he's in the hospital wing, he asks for Hermione instead of Lavender, so him and Lavender break up. Okay, can we, can there be some kind of action scene, maybe, please? Okay, fine, sir. Tell you what, I'll have some Death Eater set the Weasley house on fire. Does that happen in the book? No. no. Isn't that something they could pretty easily put out with magic? Probably, yeah, but we'll just have them watch <laughs> it true. happen and look all sad. All That's right, true. I mean, it's not a love scene, so that does feel like a breath of fresh air. Yeah. Oh, and also yeah, throughout it's the ugly. movie, we're going to sprinkle in little scenes of Draco Malfoy walking around Hogwarts all sketchy and going into the room of requirement. <laughs> okay. And Harry's going to confront him at a certain point and use this Sectum Semper spell he read about in his book, but it turns out to be deadly. Yeah. Uh, yeah but luckily, Snape saves Draco's life at the last second. Wow, so Harry must get in a ton of trouble. Not particularly, no. I feel <laughs> I like he's gotten into a bunch student. of trouble for much less than almost killing a student. Yeah, but no, this is all good. Yeah, this is okay, though. Well, I mean... okay, then. So then finally, <laughs> Harry's got to get this information from Slughorn because the end of the year is approaching fast. Man, well, it's going to be hard to get that secret out of Slughorn. Actually, it's going to be super easy. <laughs> barely an inconvenience. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, see, he uses the liquid luck. Oh, right, it's true. That thing he had the entire time that he could have used at any point. That's yeah, right. But so we had to deal with other things. Slughorn had told Voldemort about how to make horcruxes and split his soul into multiple pieces and shove them into objects. Oh, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> wow. And so Dumbledore's like, right, okay, well, we already got two of the objects, and I think I know where the third is. Wait, so he already knew about the horcruxes? I guess yeah, so, why did sir. Have yeah. This next horcrux, Harry's got to force Dumbledore to drink some cursed water. Oh, uh, forcing old people to drink is tight. <laughs> okay, and so they head back to Hogwarts, and Draco has managed to get some Death Eaters into the school. Why does he need the Death Eaters there? Because he needs to kill Dumbledore. So they help with that? No, he nah. just kind of confronts him on his <laughs> that own. Is true. Oh, okay, but then Snape pops out and kills Dumbledore instead of Draco. Oh no. So Harry's so upset, he chases Snape and the Death Eaters and tries to kill Snape with Sectum Sempra. Jeez. And then Snape knocks Harry down and he's like, hey, guess what? I'm the half-blood <laughs> prince. Oh. Which is... Okay, yeah, I guess if I had spent reality. more time on that mystery, that would have been a bigger reveal, huh? Maybe. And Bellatrix wants to kill Harry, but Snape is like, no, he's for the Dark Lord. And she's like, oh yeah, you're right, okay. So they kidnap him and bring him to Voldemort? No, they no, just kind of leave him. him there. Oh, interesting strategy. <laughs> and so, yeah, Bellatrix everybody's is pretty sad, and that's about world. it. What do you think? Well, I mean, honestly, it sounds like we're spending way too much time on teenage romance in this oh, one. Dude. Yeah, well, see, the thing is, everybody's Wait, talking no! about those Wait. Twilight books, so I figure we I, could get in on that action a bit. Oh, that's a good point. I like the way you money. Thank you. Man, I can't believe we only have one of these books left to adapt after uh, this. I know, sir. One more movie and that's it. No more money. No more money. That's it. <laughs> Unless. <laughs> <laughs> So, you yeah, the next Harry Potter oh, no, movie for me? One. Yes, sir, I do. And let me tell you, stuff's uh, getting real bad in the wizarding world. Oh, yeah. are we not going to make these movies good anymore? No, that's going to come a couple years from now. What I mean is that Voldemort oh. and the Death Eaters are coming into power. Uh-oh. Yeah, so Harry sends the Dursleys away for their protection, and Hermione wipes her parents' memories away. Jeez, <laughs> she couldn't have done the protection thing, too? Nope, and so they forget all about her, and she's erased from all the pictures in the house, and it's very sad. So they're just going to think they have framed pictures of empty rooms and stuff? I guess so. No, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was going to happen. Anybody who knew they had a daughter, like friends or Yeah, family. like all I those other people. I don't know. Oh, Hermione's parents are in for some But to be fair, it's a really cool movie opening. Probably, yeah. So now the good guys need to help Harry escape by confusing the Death Eaters. How do they do that? Well, like half of them are going to take Polyjuice Potion to look like him, so it's going to be this wacky scene with a bunch of Harry Potters changing into similar clothes. <laughs> oh, hanging out with a bunch of shirtless copies of yourself is tight. It sure is, sir. So they fly up to <laughs> the clouds, sure but is. a bunch of Death Eaters are waiting for them, so it's gonna be this massive battle. And then all the good guys fly into different directions. Unclear, but then Hedwig <laughs> saves Harry's life and yeah. dies. Oh, no, the pain. Friend. And also Mad-Eye Moody dies. Oh no, 
oh, one-eyed friend who was actually a completely different person for most of the time we, we ever saw him on screen. Out who they and were. Because Hedwig tried to was protect like Harry, him, so that gives away yeah. his real identity. So freaking Voldemort shows up and attacks him. Yeah, those freaking guys, they had some good bird loyalty intel, huh? <clears throat> they sure did, sir. So Voldemort attacks, but a wand technicality and Harry's insane plot armor save his life. <laughs> he does have some pretty fantastic <laughs> plot armor, doesn't he? He this truly is does. So all the surviving wizards meet at the Weasley's house to be safe from the Death Eaters, the house that was destroyed by oh the Death Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about movie. that. Then they rebuilt it so everything's okay now, but they would still know where it was, right? That's the safest place they could think of. That's what we're going with. Well, so then it's that's time what happens for a wedding. They're gonna have a wedding while well, they're all being chased by Death Eaters. Yeah, well, that's kind of the thing. They're like, maybe especially now it's important that we celebrate love and stuff. I guess yeah. that is a nice sentiment if it's like a little ceremony kind of under the radar. So then no, they have a bro. massive wedding with a bunch of people. <laughs> Oh, a bunch what? of Death Eaters attack it. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> Come on, wizards. So Harry and Ron and Hermione escape. I like how the corporate guys even rip it out of that. Horcruxes. Oh boy, what kind of stuff are they gonna do? Oh, they're gonna break into the Ministry of Magic, which is now run by the bad guys, because Umbridge works there, and she has a Horcrux locket around her neck. Jeez, how are they gonna break in? They're gonna use Polyjuice Potion to pretend like they're three people that work there. Wow, you'd think the Ministry of Magic would have some kind of <laughs> safeguard against, against that. that kind of thing. Well, yeah. they don't. It, it seems like people would do that kind of thing all the time. Like, how yeah. can they be sure about anyone's identity ever? Hey, shut up. And so they managed to get the locket and they <laughs> shut keep up. going with their adventure. <laughs> oh, boy. So what's next? Camping. What? So much camping, sir. They're going to camp oh, and camp no. and camp. So oh, I don't even want to see this. All right. Campity. Camp, camp, camp. Oh, boy, are they going to camp, sir. Okay, I got it. Okay, that's good. We're, I got it with the camping. Can we move on from the camping? No, Not really. No, no. It's never. It's going to be a while. Okay, does anything exciting happen while It's like while real camping. camping? A little bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, they take Very turns exciting, wearing though. the locket because it's evil and it does that thing to them. You know, like the ring like in Lord of the Rings? Rings. <laughs> it makes them get attacked yeah, by even, Sean Fiend. I didn't no, hear like that. It drives them a little insane and puts them in bad moods. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, and Ron's going to end up getting jealous of Harry and Hermione, and he's going to straight up leave. He's going to stop camping with them. He's done with the camping, <laughs> sir. <laughs> well, it's pretty serious, camping. I guess. They seemed really into camping. So eventually, Harry's going to find out that the Sword of Gryffindor is at the bottom of this frozen lake. And he needs it because it can destroy Horcruxes. Oh, that'll be useful, probably. Yeah, so he gets into this icy cold water to go get it, but that evil necklace starts choking him. Oh, been there. You got choked <laughs> underwater by a necklace? Yes. Okay, cool. And so anyway, yes. then Ron shows up and saves him. Uh, did he find the him? Lord. Well, it turns out that Dumbledore had left Ron this little thingy that lets you turn off lights, but that also lets you find your friends when you need to find your friends. Well, magic sure is convenient. Those are wildly different features for a thingy to have. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, sir. So then Ron is gonna stab this locket thing, but then it pops open and starts playing yeah. mind games with them. Uh, oh, like what? Like it's gonna try to scare him with some spiders. <laughs> mm, those are spooky. And then it shows him a fake vision of Harry and Hermione <laughs> making out. That just seems like it would make him angrier and want to stab the locket. Yeah, yeah, yeah make me want to stab this stabs it. Yeah, really bad strategic planning there, locket. What are you doing? <laughs> anyway, so then yeah. later some Death Eaters are gonna chase them through the woods so they disapparate. No, see, they don't disappear separate when I want there to be a cool chase or fight scene, and so this is one of those moments. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, so yeah, they're about honest. to get caught, and so Hermione decides to deform Harry's face, but the bad guys still see that he has a scar, so they're like, hmm. <laughs> right. So they bring them all to Malfoy Manor, and all the bad guys are like, wow, I wonder if this guy with the Harry Potter scar that we caught with Harry Potter's best friends is Harry Potter or not. That's a tricky one, for sure. So ah, then they put tough. them all in a cell, and Bellatrix starts torturing Hermione. Oh, man, it's gonna be hard for them to get out of that situation. Actually, well, it's going to be super easy. Well. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, Harry talks into this magical mirror shard that he has, and so that leads to Dobby, the house elf, coming to save them. Well, where did Harry get the mirror shard? Well, in the books, he got that. He got that at a certain point. But how did he get it in the movies? Oh, I don't know, but That's he's going to have it. They oh, don't okay. explain so Dobby at all. saves them all, but Bellatrix manages to kill Dobby. Oh, no, little house elf friend. And then Voldemort's <laughs> going to manage to get this thing called the Elder Wand from Dumbledore tomb and now he's super powerful and he makes some very cool lightning <laughs> oh boy here we go it's about to get crazy yeah next movie no well, go on. No. But we're done. Oh, that's extremely unsatisfying. Yeah, well, you know, we got to cut this thing off somewhere if we're going to do this new thing where we cut it off into two parts. <laughs> oh, that's right. We fair. are doing that yeah, thing, aren't no, we? Yeah. But, like, I wonder if that's going to catch on. The second part... <laughs> 
I mean, yeah. <laughs> that is the greatest ending of all. So you have Deathly Hallows Part 2 for right, me. Let's go, yes, baby. sir, I do. Amazing. And I was thinking, you know, maybe it'd be cool if we split this into two parts as well. Oh, I don't, I don't. Then when we get to the next part, we split that into two Not even funny. Well, okay, but actually, parts into two pieces. you could each. have. No That's could true. Like, there's too much. <laughs> sir, unfortunately, I think we're going to kind of have to end it with this one. We're kind of tapped out here. Oh, uh, damn it. Oh, my God. <laughs> so anyway, what happens in this one? Right, so Harry and Ron and Hermione need to go into Bellatrix's vault at Gringotts because they they think there's a horcrux in there. So what do they do? Well, they use some freaking polyjuice potion oh, to make yeah. Hermione look like her. Okay, so none of the major wizarding institutions check for polyjuice potion. They nah. just, they can't nah, detect it's too hard that to kind make. of thing. That's right, sir, to, just know, like at the ministry. It. Although this time the goblins are a little suspicious because they've been given a heads up. Er, so what's the good guy's strategy here? Well, Harry uses the imperious curse on the goblin that's suspicious of them and he leads them to the vault. Isn't that an unforgivable <laughs> curse? It is, yeah. Kind of, kind of a little messed up that he did that isn't it? Well, Harry's a good guy, so it's kind of forgivable, yeah. right? Okay, so I guess we gotta make save sure that this here. banker Different goblin who's just doing yeah. his job isn't harmed in any way. Oh, actually, no. While the goblin's under the curse, he gets burned alive. Yeah. By oh, a dragon. that's oh, true. My God. But the good guys get the Horcrux and fly away on the dragon, so that's nice. I guess. The but then they gotta go find the more Horcruxes place. because they gotta poke them on this situation. You know, they gotta catch them all. Is it gonna be hard to figure out where they, <laughs> they all are? Actually, it's gonna be situation. super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, because see, when the plot demands it, Harry gets these visions showing him how to keep the story going, like where Voldemort yeah. might be or where the Horcruxes might be. Oh, that's very handy, and it's not a two-way thing, like Voldemort can't see where Harry is. Somehow he can't, no. <laughs> so Harry and his friends go back to Hogwarts, which is now a terrible <laughs> place could. being run by Snape. He okay. could, so they manage to regain control of it, and Voldemort tells everyone telepathically if they just give him Harry Potter, he won't attack the school. Oh, yikes. Yeah, and one of the Slytherins considers it, so much McGonagall sends them all to the dungeons. <laughs> oh, because that's the Hogwarts house where it's just the evil kids. Exactly. Yep. I think that might be kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy if this is how those kids are treated. No, 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 no. It's just a triumphant moment where a teacher locks a bunch of 11-year-olds in a dungeon. <laughs> oh, okay. So now Harry's oh, gotta go evil. talk to this ghost lady because she knows where a horcrux is. Mm, spooky. Spooky. Go on. But she's like, no, I don't want to tell you because I told Voldemort back in the day and he was a real jerk yeah, about it. Wow, so what does Harry do? He's like, please. And she's like, okay. Okay. Wow. Anyway, now Voldemort's <laughs> gonna attack Hogwarts with a bunch of Death Eaters. Uh-oh, so do the good guys take some Felix Felicis liquid luck or something? No, they don't have any of that at the moment. Do they use a time turner to make sure they win? <laughs> no, those those are all broken now. All Every of our one powerful of those is weapons. Broken. Do all the other wizarding schools come and help out as backup? Listen, sir, I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about potentially helpful magical things we've established <laughs> in previous movies, okay? <laughs> oh, okay, let me get off of the, that thing. Thanks, and so then there's a big old fight and a bunch of people <laughs> are gonna die. Oh, a bunch of people dying is tight. What? Wow, I don't know why I said that. That was well, really in the context evil. of the movie. Okay. It really was. And I apologize. I don't know where from inside me that came from, but I got some self-reflecting to do for sure. <laughs> All right. So anyway, then Harry looks inside <laughs> like Voldemort's the studio mind executive's again, which character is a thing he can do and realizes that Voldemort's snake is a Horcrux. Wow. So I guess Voldemort must send that snake super far away, like to another country Not to protect wrong. it. Huh? He's oh, too long there. Snake is going around He's Hogwarts lonely. fighting people during the battles. Huh. Yeah. Neville's gonna end up killing it, actually. Oh, he is. Yeah, I can see this kid finds an old sword inside the judgy talking hat and uses that to kill a snake that has a piece of a guy's soul in it. That, that, welcome are to kinda Harry Potter. Weird movies, huh? Kinda, yeah. When you say the things out loud, sounds kind of weird and silly. So what else happens? <laughs> well, Voldemort's gonna kill Professor Snake. Oh, how come? Because he realizes that the Elder One is probably tied to Snake, you know, because he's the one who killed Dumbledore, the previous owner. Yikes! So Harry takes some of Snape's tears and puts them inside that, uh, you know, the bowl of backstories there. <laughs> what is he seeing <laughs> the there? The bowl of backstories. Snape wasn't actually evil this whole time. He just really wanted to hook up with Harry's mom back in the day. Oh my. God. No, but like in a nice redemptive way, you know, like he was kind of helping Harry this whole time. All right. Yes, he turns out oh, Snape and no. Lily were really close when they were young kids. Okay. So, you know, in terms of casting, it's really important that we get someone with similar eyes to Daniel Radcliffe, you know, because we keep saying that thing about how he has his mother's eyes. So that's, you know, that's, that's super important. Uh -huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Have you tried this new Angry Birds game yet? These birds are so angry at these pigs. They, they, they don't like them at all. I... Yeah. 
Yeah. Did you hear what I said, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no. I, I definitely heard what you said, for sure. Okay, great. So then Harry finds out that Voldemort <laughs> is inside him. Oh. No, like a part of his soul is inside him, so Harry's gotta die or Voldemort won't die. Oh, no. Yeah, so he actually lets Voldemort kill him. Wow. So then he goes to a weird limbo <laughs> train station with a baby Voldemort, and Dumbledore is like, hey, you can go be alive again if you want. That's fine. You could go do that. Oh, he can. Well, that's... He should do that, probably. Yeah, because now the movie can continue. Wow, magic is very useful for, <laughs> you know, making movies continue. It sure is, sir. And so then Voldemort and Harry are going to fight again while being clouds and making scary faces at each other. What? And then the freaking Elder Wand <laughs> kind of backfires on Voldemort and kills him because through some technicality, it was actually Harry's wand at that point, kind of. This freaking lucky child. <laughs> He's just the luckiest child, sir. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. So then 19 <laughs> years later, they're all grown up, so we're gonna need some pretty convincing makeup work to make them look older. Would you settle for unconvincing? I would. Great. And then we find out that <laughs> Harry named his son Albus Severus Potter. He named Poor him kid. after the guy who really, really wanted to be with his mom. That's right. That's kind of, that's a little <laughs> weird, but at least he got that Albus name in there. That's kind of nice. Yeah, the headmaster that wanted to knowingly let Voldemort kill him at the perfect moment. Oh my god, what? And then secretly plotted with the guy that <laughs> yeah. was into his yeah. mom for years. All right, I mean... Yeah. Yeah, I guess you can name your kids whatever you want. You yeah, sure can. And so what do you think? Well, it sounds like a great ending, you know? Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how long do you think we have to wait till we start milking this again? Ah, a few years at most. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> These are so well written, bro. I swear. Yeah, uh, yeah. He kind of tore that second half apart, not gonna lie. Yeah. That was a little difficult. Yeah, that I was mean, a little the, painful. Uh, the, the, the first. Half, uh, I feel like the the first half, like, and the, that previous movie with the whole, like, drama stuff. Like, yeah. It, that was, like, all the, the basic stuff that I was like. Oh, there is. There is happening. a lot of teenage drama. But it's like, you know, I mean, at the end of the day. Yeah, no, no, I mean, look, dude, these videos are just are just having fun, man. So, um, like I said, let us know what other stuff you guys want us to do, uh, pitch meeting reactions to, or honest trailers, or different things like that. These are just a blast. And yeah, thank you just for being here. Thank you for joining us, for watching. If you guys are new to the channel, uh, welcome. Hopefully you stick around. We would love to have you with us. we got a lot more pitch meetings, and then obviously tons of movie reactions and stuff like that. And if you do, we will see you all in the next video.